So as of now we have seen how to create a linked list, how to traverse a linked list and how to add elements to a linked list. But the way that we have added elements is this is how we have written the code. But is this the right way to write the code? No, this is not the right way to write the code. This is not a standard way to write the code to add the element into a linked list. So basically what we are going to study in this particular session is what is the standard way of writing or uh, the code to add an element into a linked list. So how exactly it should look like if you ask me, you should be capable of creating a linked list and after that every element that you add, you just call a method called as add and the add method will take care of adding the element into a linked list. Now how to do that is what we are going to see now. Now before we add an element, we need to keep certain things in mind. Now whenever we are adding an element, we will see two different cases. Now what are the two different cases? The first case is the uh, linked list would be empty. There won't be any elements inside the linked list. And the second scenario is the linked list would not be empty. There will be elements. It might be one, two, three or any number of elements or any number of nodes inside the linked list. So th both the cases has to be handled differently. Now how to handle it? Let's see step by step. So first let's take a case when the linked list is empty. So whenever the linked list is empty, every linked list will have something called as head and the head will be pointing to null. Now what is that we have to do over here is, whenever head is pointing to null, we know that the linked list is empty. So when linked list is empty, the way we add the node will be different. So in both the cases, one thing is for sure that we need to create a new node. So how do we create a new node? We know how to write the code. But let's assume that this is the node that I have created. Whenever I create a node, I have to put an element. The element is 10. And the next part will actually starting point will point to the null let's start. Now I will give a reference to this node. The reference to this node that I have given is 10. So this is one scenario. Now how to handle this scenario? Let's see. So what I need to do is I need to check is head pointing to null. If head is pointing to null, it means to say that interest is 10. If linked list is empty, then what is that I have to do over here is the head should start pointing to temp or the head should start pointing to this particular node. Now, how do I ensure that the head points to this particular node? Simple thing that I have to do. Now, you can clearly see temp is already pointing to this node. If temp is already pointing to this node, so the node's reference is already available in temp. So, all that I have to do is the same references, I will place it inside the head. So whatever is there in temp, I will place it inside head. So head will automatically start pointing to uh, this particular new node. So this becomes, uh, this is how you add a new element to a linked list. So I hope how to add a new element to a linked list which is empty is clear. Now let's see how we we'll add an element for the linked list which is not empty. So what I'd like to do is I'll take that particular scenario. Let's assume this is the linked list that I already have. Now the first thing that I have to do is I need to create a new node. So I am creating a new node and the reference for that new node is nothing but temp. So same as previous argument. Now what I am going to do is I am going to check is head pointing to null or not. You can clearly see head is not pointing to null. If head is not pointing to null it means to say that the linked list is not empty. If the linked list is not empty what I need to do actually if you ask me the last node that I have as of now is the uh, node which has the element 30. Now, the next part of the last is pointing to null. Now, rather than pointing to null, this should start pointing to the temp. If it starts pointing to the temp, automatically this gets added to this particular linked list and this becomes the part of the linked list and the temp would be the last node because 10 is pointing to null. So, I hope this is clear. But the question is, how can we do this? The solution for this is very simple. I need the reference of the last node. So, as of now, this is the last node. I need the reference of this. Now, how can I get the reference of this? One simple thing. I have the reference of only this node. So, from here, I should keep on moving till the last node. So, what is that I will do is, I will introduce a uh, reference called as current, which will start pointing to the same node where the head is pointing to. So, current will start pointing to the first node. After this, what I need to do is, I need to keep on moving this. So I'll check, is this the last node? No. So I'll move this. Is this the last node? No. I will move this. Is this the last node? Yes. This is the last node. Once I reach the last node, what I need to do is, I will say, this node, that is nothing but current dot next, it is pointing to null. So I should make sure that the current dot next doesn't point to null. Rather than that, 
in current dot next what should be there is the reference of the next node and where do i have that reference i have it in temp so temp i need to store in current dot next and if i do this i, I would have handled the second scenario as well where i am adding an element to a linked list which is not empty so i hope this is completely clear how you can add an element to the case one that's nothing but when the linked list is empty and how you can add an element when the linked list is not so what are the steps that i need to do the first step is i need to create a new node so i am just saying create a new node and after that i need to check whether the linked list is empty or not how do i check whether it's empty or not by saying if end is equal to null if end is equal to null it means it's empty if it is empty what i need to do is whatever is there in temp i need to put it inside head so head is equal to uh, temp is what is what i need to write so i am just say, uh, saying over here in simple terms make temp as head and the next thing if it is not empty definitely the condition will be false if the condition is false i need to add the temp to the last node that's all i have to do now you already know how i can traverse from here to here because we had seen the for loop earlier so we are making use of the same for loop and then we are going to write the code for this so now let's go and write the code for this now let's write the code to actually add a element into a linked list so the first thing that i have to do is i should not write all of these things but before i change all of these things let me create a new method so what, where should i create a new method i should create a new method inside the class called as linked list so i have a class called as linked list i already have how to print the linked list now i need to create one more method similarly like this so i will say void add void add now this add method should accept one parameter and what's the parameter it should accept the integer value whatever i need to add so i'll say int and what is the element that i need to add so the element i need to add i will just store it inside an element a variable called as e next i will open this method i'll close this method so the first thing that i have to do over here is I need to create a new node. Now, how do I create a new node? Very simple. I just have to say new, then node. And what should I pass as a parameter? The parameter I need to pass is nothing but the integer value that I have accepted. So, the integer value is available inside a variable e. E is what I will pass. So, you can clearly see what it does is it will create an object of class node. Now, I will just uh, store it inside a variable called as temp. So, I have created the node. Now what I need to do is one simple task. I need to check whether the linked list is empty or not empty. If it is empty, I need to handle it, handle it differently. If it is not empty, I can handle it differently. So I'll go to the next line and I'll check if if temp is equal to null. If it is equal to null, it means to say it is empty. So I'll come inside and I'll say else as well. I will. Now, if it is empty, if condition will work. If it is not empty, else part will work. If it is empty, all that I have to do is the head. Oh, sorry, this is not temp. I made a mistake while typing. It is actually head is not equal to null. If head is equal to null, so head is nothing but the instance variable that you have over here. You can even write this as this dot head. Since there is no collusion between uh, any uh, local variable and instance variable, I have written it directly. Yes. Now, inside what I need to do is. Whatever is my temp, that only becomes the head because that's the first node. So what I will do is head is equal to temp. Head is equal to temp. So if it is empty, this is how I handle it. If it is not empty, what I need to do? I need to create a new reference, and that reference should start from end and go all the way to the last index. So how do I do that? I will come to the next line. I will come to the else part. In the else part, what I need to say is I need to introduce a new variable called as current. So I will introduce a new variable called as current. Now this current will actually start pointing to the first node, and what is the first node? The head node is the first node. So I will say current is equal to head. Now, now the question is, what is the type of current? Type of current is same as the type of head. So what is the type of head? The type of head is nothing but uh, nothing but the node itself. So what I will do is I will say node. Great. Next after that I will come to the next line. now current node is actually pointing to the first node now i need to make sure that from the first node it goes all the way to the last node now i need to how i can make sure that it goes all the way to the last node just by traversing one by one one by one one by one and we are already seen that loop so i will directly write the loop why current dot next current dot next is not equal to now 
So current dot next is not equal to null. I will open and close. And over here, what I need to do is, if it is not equal to null, I need to move the current to the next node. So how do I say that? I will say current is equal to current dot next. Current dot next. And so this is all I have to do. Now what exactly would have happened is, the current was pointing to that node. Over here, once the loop gets executed and once I come out of the loop, definitely what happens is current will be pointing to the last node. Now what I need to do is, in the last node, I have to make sure the next part of the last node. And who is pointing to the last node? Current is pointing to the last node. So I'll say current dot next. So as of now, current dot next is equal to null. So what should I store in current dot next? The new node that I have created over here, that is what I have to store. And where it is present, it's present in time. So I'll say current dot next is equal to time. I'll say current dot next is equal to time. So this is all I have to do. So this is how I write a code to add an element into a linked list. Now how does this become very simple? Let's see it step by step. Over here, I have created a new node and I have said new time. Next what I have done is I have checked if the linked list is empty. So if end is null, it means linked list is empty. If it's not null, it's not empty. So if it's empty, this is what I have to do. If it's not empty, this is what I have to do. So I hope till here it's completely clear. Now I have to do some changes in the main method. So main method, I had written it very inefficiently earlier. So what I'll do is I'll remove all of these lines. Now I don't have to create P1, P2, P3 and all those things. I have created a linked list. Now what I will do is I will say LL dot. So LL is my linked list. So I'll say ll dot add. So what is the element that I need to add? I will say 10. So if I say add 10, what exactly happens is this will call the add method. So if I go to the add method, it will call this particular method and it will pass 10 over here. As soon as it does that, it will create a new node and inside that node there will be 10 and in the next part there will be nothing that is null. What happens is it will check is that equal to null. Obviously it is equal to null because there is no element present inside that link list because we are not added anything earlier. So what happens? It becomes 10. So that's the first node that you got. Next time when I add an element, it will not execute this part. Rather, it will start executing this part. That means it will start adding the elements one next to the other. So if I go to the main method, I need to say ll.add20.add20. Next, ll.add30. And say, yeah, I'll say 40. So you can clearly see inside the linked list class, I have created the add method, I am calling it four times and after that I am calling the method print linked list, which will print all the elements of that particular linked list, which uh, of which linked list, of the linked list named as ll. So if I just execute this code, it has to print 10 to 40. So if I execute this code, you can clearly see it's printing 10, 20, 30, 40. So I hope how to add an element to the starting or sorry, to the end of the linked list or at the last, uh, as a last note is completely clear to you. If you have enjoyed this video and would not like to miss any of our videos, hit on the subscribe button and click the bell icon.